a new day, a new project. Well, I have this power amplifier. That's a C Audio RA3001. That's a professional power amplifier. 2 times 675 watts on 4 ohms, I remember. And uh, it's time to check it out, to clean it up, the fan, and to solve an issue with the this channel B vometer. And of course, this needs to be clean because they are cracking a little bit, they are making noises. And uh, behind here, there are the outputs and the inputs, any kind and every kind of inputs. And uh, you can use it in bridge and stereo. Anyway, it's a really nice amplifier, old school, I may say, made in Great Britain. Made by uh, C Audio in Cambridge, England, UK. Let me take the tops out. We have two metal plates, solid metal plates, sticked in some screws on the top and on the bottom. A quick look inside. Yeah, now the bottom is going off. And you can see the whole amplifier is made on a single board. That's kind of uh, interesting design. Everything is on a single board, even the rectifiers and the electrolytics and you know the power so a little bit of cleaning doesn't hurt before the real one what i'm trying to do next is to check the power supplies and i have those little two electrolytics there and they are looking pretty ugly and a resistor also and that's pretty let's call it rusty but i think it's more like carbonized so i'm gonna take out the big uh, capacitors from the power supply to check for esr and there we are with, i'm taking the big ones off that's 4700 microfarad 110 volts okay let's talk about these little ones and they supposed to be 220 microfarads on 16 volts a power supply for the preamps and look there it's only 442 it's five times less than it should be and uh, the other one it's even worse it's 23 microfarads or something now i have to test the the big ones they're pretty hard to find good ones so it's 110 volts kind of strange voltage but it proves like all of them are okay so all I have to do is just to put them back and uh, let me measure the resistor I told you. It's 21 kilo ohms by the meter, by the ohm meter. Now everything is back in place. The resistor, is, it's also, you replace it. I'm using a lot of uh, flux because there is no mechanical structure over there. So everything is uh, related and tied to the main board. Uh, unfortunately, I had to I had to do a trick over there because one of the one of the circuit uh, got uh, loose. But uh, there is no problem. I just put a piece of wire and soldier back again and checked all the other uh, pieces too. Eventually, clean everything with alcohol and uh, this is good because the flux i'm using it's a pure colophonium that will uh, that will prevent the board for further oxidation now the potentiometers need to be uh, uh, cleaned a little bit so what i'm gonna do is just to have some contact spray for uh, electronics the cracking sound is gone everything is back in place i have to check if it's still working, yes, it's working. That's the power consumption in standby from the main. Uh, now, uh, let me take a look to the vometers. I had to change the wires because the originals, they've been too tough, you know, and they didn't uh, really resist to all these uh, ups and downs. And I put some more flexible to the board. So finally the board got tied again. And there are two sockets for two integrated circuits responsible for driving the LEDs. Let me check the voltage to, for both of these sockets. With the IC out, of course, and we have 22.6 to 1 and 
0.9 to the next one so that should be absolutely okay by the schematic it's absolutely fine and I try to to put it back and see what's happening it's not working no way but I found what was the problem all the LEDs are in series so I found the problem one that LED up there is burnt so that's why they've been in series and they are not running anymore it's like a chain with a weak link but I shorted the broken lead the burn lead and somehow I realized that uh, I can use it like that for a while it's absolutely impossible to get that board out all the screws are rusty and uh, maybe with the next cleaning or something I'll do that but for now it's enough I have a signal path and I can see if if I have signal or not and how much signal on channel A uh, it's much better than without anyway the clip the red one with clipping are the most important one that's uh, that show you how much to push the amplifier so somehow this problem is solved and let's go to the next uh, step is to take off the fan and to oil it and clean it and also clean the area it's pretty dusty all around and uh, this is a brushless fan 24 volts and what's nice about it have a barrel a really a really one so it's not only magnetic levitation or something and uh, there is a special washer over there keeping the things together now I'm just taking the dust away clean it really nice I have this kind of oil for fine mechanics and this is so good for uh, for this kind of fence and not only and now let me put the things together okay let me have the washer back in place keeping all the things together and uh, very important is to have the label back or something to seal this opening dust over there with oil it's a really abrasive something and that really makes a, a huge problem okay so the fan is back in place all the wires reconnected and I think it's time for having the last uh, check before having all the things uh, back having all the metal plates and everything in, in place so those are the final transistors there are 24 of them MOSFET and uh, N MOSFET and P MOSFET and everything works with 2 times 105 volts plus minus 105 volts so I may say from from top to bottom we have 210 11 volts or something it's a it's a really nice amplifier so the fan is clean now it's back in place everything gets properly set back and we're gonna have a last test to see if everything's okay and everything gets working as it should now all I have to do is to put back the plates on top and the bottom back to work for many more years yeah I have to tie this a little bit better thank you for now and I'll be back with some new projects until then don't forget to have fun be safe bye bye